With this new layer I am creating, I want to select his skin, and color it. First, I double click on the new layer's name. Then I will name it skin. I'm going to use one of the selection tools I've learned about. I think I will use the quick selection tool on this one. I'll go inside the arm. Then I will click, and start dragging a selection. Photoshop tries to help me out, by finding the edges of the arm. Notice that I have sample all layers checked, up in the options bar. That's very important, so Photoshop is working with the layer underneath. I also have enhanced the edge checked, too. That also helps get an accurate selection. But it wasn't perfect. I'm going to press the letter Q, to turn on quick mask mode. That's not what I want to see. So I'll double click the quick mask icon in the toolbar. What I want to see in red are the selected areas, not the masked areas. I'll check selected areas and click OK. Now I'll press the letter Q again. I'm now seeing what I selected in red. It's not a perfect selection. Let's fix this. I'm going to press Command plus on my Mac a few times to zoom in. That will be Control plus on a PC. I'm still in quick mask mode. You can tell because my skin layer is colored. I'll grab my paint brush tool. Up in the options bar, I want to get a hard, round brush. I need to resize my brush so it is smaller. On a Mac, I hold my option and control keys down. Then click and drag to the left. On a PC, hold your alt key down, right mouse button click, and drag to the left. Then, using black paint in quick mask mode, I can go back in and paint in selected areas that were missed. I then press my X key. That's the shortcut to flip the black and white color swatches in the color picker. Now I'm painting with white. In quick mask mode, that removes selected areas I paint on. That is why I love quick mask mode. It allows me to fine tune my selection with a brush. Photoshop's artificial intelligence is good, and it is getting better all the time. It's not perfect yet, so quick mask saves the day. Now my selection is looking good. I'm going to press Q to get out of quick mask mode. I can now see the marching ants. I will press Command-0 to fit the image back in the screen. Control-0 on a PC. Now that I am not in quick mask mode, and my skin layer is back to normal gray, I am going to choose a skin color. Then I will paint on the arm I've selected. One important thing I should check with a black and white image. It needs to be in a color mode to color it. I'm going to the image menu. Mode. And make sure this is in RGB color mode. When asked by Photoshop, I'll choose not to flatten the image. I'm going to make my brush huge, and paint. The marching ants will keep me from going outside my selection. Now, that looks pretty darn flat. Let me introduce you to one of Photoshop's most powerful features. Blending modes. Over here, on the layers panel, you'll see this drop down. It usually says normal. Normal means that no blending mode is being applied to the selected layer. If I click to open this drop down, you'll see a large list of ways Photoshop can blend this layer with the layers below. As you move down this list of blending modes, Photoshop will show you how they will blend. Watch the image. These blending modes darken. These blending modes lighten. This set of blending modes increase contrast. These blending modes subtract, add and or divide values between the layers. These final blending modes deal with color and luminance values. For this exercise, we will be using the color blending mode. That means this layer will only blend its color information with the layers below. Can you see how that works? The luminance values, the darks and lights, are retained from the photo layer underneath. Our skin layer is only sharing that skin color we picked. To save time, now I will pause the video and do the same procedure on the rest of his skin. Then I will be right back. Okay. Now I've completed his face and other arm. I will press Command, or Control D, to drop the marching ants. 
you can better see what we've done so far. Now, if we end up with skin color that is too intense, we can put our cursor right on the word opacity, and then click and drag to the left to reduce the opacity. In Photoshop, we call that method a scrubby slider. Let's adjust the opacity of this layer, until the skin color looks just right. As you can see, this is pretty powerful stuff we can do in Photoshop. I suggest you create a new layer for each different area you wish to color. Then follow the same process we did for the skin. For example, his cheeks should have a rosy glow. His mouth would be more pink as well. I will create a new layer and name it Lips and Cheeks. As we did before, we will change the blending mode for this layer, to color blending mode. I will grab the quick selection tool. Make sure sample all layers and enhance the edges are selected in the options bar. I will zoom in, quite close, on the mouth and cheeks. Then I will start to select the lips. Press Q for quick mask. That lets us better see what we have selected. I'll press the letter B to get my brush tool. Then I will resize the brush so it is much smaller, and a bit softer edged. In quick mask mode, I'll use white paint to remove, and smooth out, areas of the selection under the lower lip. Now I'll switch to black paint and add in the areas that weren't selected by the quick select tool. I'll press the letter Q again to get out of quick mask mode. So I can see marching ants. Now I'm in regular brush mode. I'm going to find the right shade of pink for his mouth area. Looking at it, I need to erase some of that on the lower lip. That's the beauty of layers. I can erase this pink, without disturbing any of the layers underneath. I grab the eraser tool, shortcut is the letter E, and get rid of the extra. Again, I will use the scrubby slider on the word opacity, and lower the opacity of this layer until the lips look just right. Let's give him rosy cheeks. We'll stay on this same layer. I press the letter B for the brush tool. I'm going to resize my brush, so it is large and soft. Then paint on his cheeks. It's a bit too strong. Maybe I should have done this on a different layer. Then I could adjust the opacity without bothering the lips. Instead, I'll grab my eraser tool. I'm going to reduce the opacity and flow of the eraser. Set it quite low, maybe about 10%. I'm just trying to reduce the pink on the cheeks so it looks more real. So, that is the process for coloring a black and white photo. It's best that you do a new color blend layer for each different section you want to color. You just repeat the process until you've colored the photo the way you want it to look. I'm going to pause this video for a moment, and do just that. Going through this exercise taught you a lot of new skills. Play. Practice. I hope you enjoyed this exercise.